Next thing I want to talk about is this idea called covers. Let's say we have two sets of functional dependencies we'll call 1f and 1g. And let's assume that the f closure is the same as g closure. Well, f, if f is a subset of g closure, we would say g covers f. And if g is a subset of f closure, we would say f covers g. So in this case, since f is g covers f and f covers g, we would say that f is equivalent to g. Now, when two sets of functional dependencies are equivalent, that does not mean they have to have the exact set of functional dependencies. And let me give you an example here. So here I have a relation R, A, B, C, three attributes, and I have one set of functional dependencies, F, A function determines B, B function determines C, C function determines A, and I have another set of functional dependencies, I call it G, C function determines B, B function determines A, and A function determines C. Well, as you can see, they have nothing in common in terms of functional dependencies. But if we look at that, F, and we look at the G, they have the same F closure, and that's going to be the same as the same G closure there. So in this case, F covers G, and G covers F, and F is equivalent to G. Up to this point, we said that F was equivalent to G, but we don't have a process to show whether or not F is equivalent to G. And we're going to do that right now. And to show F is equivalent to G, we need to show two things. First, we want to show that F is a subset of G closure. And the second thing we want to show is that G is a subset of F closure. So if we can show both those things, then the set of functional dependencies F is indeed equivalent to G. Now notice the following. I rewrote the set of functional dependencies for F in blue, and I rewrote the functional dependencies for, uh, for G in green. And I thought that made it a little easier to, to read. Now what we want to do is take every functional dependency in F, and we take the left-hand side, and we apply the X closure for each left-hand side against G. So we start off with the A, and we want to do A closure with respect to G. Now if A closure contains the right-hand side of this functional dependency, then we know this functional dependency would be in G closure. So let's start off. Well, we know A closure will include A by reflexivity. And let's see, A function determines C, and C function determines B. So A closure with respect to G includes A, B, C. So, aha, it has the right-hand side B. Therefore, that functional dependency will be in G closure. Next, we look at B closure, and we know by reflexivity that'll include the B. So we want to figure B closure with respect to G, and if it contains the right-hand side, then this functional dependency will be in G closure. So B closure has a B, B function determines A, and A function determines C. So B closure is ABC, and aha, the right-hand side is within B closure. Therefore, that functional dependency will be in G closure. Finally, we do the right uh, C closure, left-hand side there, and we want to figure its closure. 
We know it's going to start off with a C by reflexivity. C function determines B, so there'll be a B. B function determines A, so there'll be an A. So C closure is CBA. And we note that the right-hand side is in this closure. Therefore, that functional dependency will be in F, uh, in G closure. So what we've done so far is found out that F is indeed a subset of G closure. So we circle that and we check that off. Now at this point we're halfway done. We've shown, shown that G covers F. We now need to see whether F covers G. We now need to see whether F covers G. To do that, we take each functional dependency in G, the left-hand side, and we see, I'll do the first one here, we see, we determine C closure with respect to F, and see whether it contains the right-hand side. So in this case, C closure includes the C by reflexivity, C function determines the A, a function determines B, so we have CAB, and the right-hand side of this function pency is in C closure. Therefore, C function determines B is in F closure. We now take the next functional dependency, and we figure B closure with respect to F, and it includes B by reflexivity, B function determines C, C function determines A, so we have BCA. This B closure includes the A, so therefore this functional dependency will be an F closure. And finally, we figure A closure with respect to F, and that's going to include the A. A function determines B, and B function determines C. So A closure with respect to F, actually F closure, is ABC. This contains the right-hand side of <coughs> the functional dependency. Therefore, A function determines C would be an F closure. Now what we've shown is that F indeed covers G, And that's the second part we've demonstrated. So this clearly shows that the set of functional dependencies F is equivalent to the functional dependencies G because F covers G and G covers F. And as you can see, they have no functional dependencies in common, so equivalency has to do whether F covers G and G covers F. Thanks.